Hello friends, welcome to your only channel Times of Coding. Today in our series Scala Express, we will learn about abstract type. This session will help you to understand Scala abstract type and its usage. In previous session, we have understood tuples, lazy evaluation and enumerations. In this session, we will learn about abstract type, pre-initialization, path dependent types. Okay, so now we can define abstract type if that member of a class or trait is an abstract. If the member does not have a complete definition in that class, abstract members are intended to be implemented in subclasses only. This idea found in many object oriented languages and we can write abstract type like trait abstract type. Here I'm defining type t and then defining one function called diff perform it will have parameter x of type t again then variable as const and var mute const which will be again type t now the next important thing is to use above abstract type and with the help of this abstract type we need to define some concrete classes so we will see now here i'm defining class called abstract implementation this abstract implementation will extend abstract type when we extend some trait with this extend keyword, that means this class need to define everything which was abstract in this trait. So first we are defining type as a string. Then we are defining perform function definition as x concat x. And then we are keeping value for constant and mute. So the above implementation gives a concrete meaning to the type name t. By defining it as an alias of type string, the perform operation concatenates a given string with itself and the constant and the mute constant values both are set to toc because here we are keeping toc in const and then we are assigning this const only into mute const so that means we have defined a complete class and in that complete class whatever method was from abstract type we have defined them as well so i'm defining one new trait here which is any trait and then I'm keeping numerator and denominator. These both are immutable types of variable and both will be having value of int type. Abstract wells sometimes play a role of analogous to superclasses parameter. They let you provide details in subclasses, but they're missing in superclasses. This is particularly important for trait because traits do not have a constructor. Let me repeat, traits do not have a constructor to which you could pass parameter. So the usual notion of parameterizing a trait works with abstract wells that are implemented in subclasses. All right. So now we are defining object of this any trait, and there I'm keeping value for numerator and denominator as two. This expression yields an instance of an anonymous class. You see, this is not the trait instance we are creating here. When we add new with this trait name. And we open the braces at that moment this piece of code will behave as an anonymous class that mixes in the trait in fact and is defined by the body this particularly anonymous class instantiation has an effect analogous to the instance creation of new rationally so what if, if you need to include some condition as pre-initialize that also we can do with the help of require method so you see Trait is any trait, the above definition, numerator, denominator, and then we are keeping one statement as required denominator greater than zero. So basically, we wanted to ignore the situation where this denominator can become zero or less than zero. Then, to instantiate this new object, we need to pass denominator value in advance. So now we will write new and then we will open braces. We will define value for numerator and denominator. Since denominator is 2, we are keeping, we will do with any trait. And to mix with a precondition trait, we can write like class precondition A and B as parameters. Extending numerator is equal to A, which we are keeping here as class constructor. Denominator as B, and then we are extending any trait. Trait here. 
pre initialized fields are initialized before the superclass constructor. So that means this is the superclass constructor when we call it new precondition. Before, in fact, that constructor call, that call will go through trait precondition. Their initializers cannot refer to the object that's being constructed. Consequently, if such an initializer refers to this, the reference goes to the object that the class or object that being constructed or the constructed object itself. We can retrieve value out of these variables, in fact, and that we will see in this example here. So I'm keeping new with precondition and I'm keeping two comma four. So two will go to numerator, four will go to denominator. And when we write abc dot numerator, we will get that value. Okay. Moving on to example where we will learn more about epsec type. Suppose you are given to the task of model and eating habits of humans. So you will start writing the first class as food like, which I'm keeping here. And then I'm defining epsec class humans. And in that human class, I'm defining one function called eat. They can eat anything and that anything should be food type. That is a parameter I'm keeping here. Because food class we already have, so this statement will be good. But so far, definitions are not having any relations. All right. So then we can define another class called class of grass. Now grass is also food for few animals, not for humans. Let's be clear here. So I'm defining grass class, which is extending food. And then I'm defining class Chinese, which is extending humans. Okay. So both the classes. We have got subclasses now. And then I'm keeping the same method called def eat. And here also I'm keeping eat food type of grass. You see, there we are getting food type. And here, since grass is our subclass of food, we are keeping grass. Obviously, as we are not defining body for eat method in Chinese subclass, that will become as problem. So now we will make even that Chinese class also as abstract because we are not having this function body here. So I'm keeping this definition of eat function as open-ended and I'm making the class Chinese abstract type. Now Chinese will be happy because they technically don't need to eat the grass. So the probability of eating Chinese if I define this class as abstract type will be will be the lowest. So they will be happy. But think again. Can you really make the Chinese to eat that grass? No. So let's see how we should handle this situation. Now, class grass extending food. This is same as above. Now, class Chinese extending humans. This is also same as above, except abstract. Now, we are defining eat method, and this is having anything type of food. Chinese will be happy. They don't need to eat grass now. So, they are eating food. Now, in this function body, I'm writing print Helen eating anything whatever we will pass here they will be eating that okay so far so good but as we know this brood of humans are very cunning and that you will also experience in this example by this definition we have allowed them to eat grass or food but these days they are eating bats they are eating snakes so we gave them the option for abstract and this is what our expectation that they will define some function, they will eat some food. But instead, what they have done, when they have got abstract type, they have defined their own class of food. So they have defined class of food as bat, and this class they have declared a subclass of food. Now, they have defined one variable called Zinping. Zinping is a type of humans, and since humans is a superclass of Chinese, they have defined new Chinese here. Okay. So far, so good. Now, the Zinping object, which is type of Chinese, he can probably call eating, because eating is inside the Chinese class. They will call the eat method here. And in that, they will have new bat. How they can have new bat? Because you have defined food here. And food is type of anything. And bat is a subclass of food, so they can eat anything, subclass of food or food. It's the best scenario use case for them. Okay, now come back. 
I think we are moving too far from the actual point. The point which I was making here is we can define who will eat what at compile time as above example. We have already seen. But at runtime, anything can be eaten. And this happened because we were resilient with their choices of food. So we need to be explicitly definite with the type of food in this example. So now, how you can control them? Now you can define class of food. This class of food is the supermost class for any type of food. Then you will define abstract class as humans. Now here you need to define type. Type of safe food. Now this type of safe food could be anything as food or subclass of food. This symbol is subclass or the same class. Now diff eat function will have anything kind of safe food. You see, in previously we have seen food type, but here we are talking about safe food type. Okay, now when it comes to safe food type, we will define class for leafy veg. And this extend food, you see. So this will be the subclass of food type. Now the class Chinese will extend humans and we need to declare type safe food is equal to leafy veg for them. We need to be explicitly definitive for them. So then I'm defining the same function again, eat anything but with leafy veg. Again, explicitly definitive here. And then we are keeping println message called eating anything. So whatever we will pass here, they will eat. But here we are passing the subtype. And the subtype is leafy vegetables. So now we can explicitly defining safe food as leafy veg for Chinese. And this is indirectly applicable to humans class also because Chinese are subclasses for him so we have defined safe food and in that safe food type we have clearly mentioned it could be food or the subclass on it so this way we would be safe and chinese would be safe so now when jinping will try to eat bat let's see that problem statement so now again jinping is very arrogant he need bat that means he need bat only so now he is again defining class of bat type and then jinping which claims himself as human types is a new Chinese. So he's Chinese, but he's claiming as humans. Okay, that's fine. Different topic. <laughs> and then Xinping again trying to eat the bat. But since we have defined our safe food explicitly, will he be allowed? Let's see. When he will try this statement, he will get runtime details, like type mismatch. Found bat, but required safe food. You see, that's how. In fact, while establishing your relationship of subclasses, you can control the type. You see, in this example, in fact, most of the thing was a little open-ended earlier. That's why few of the human took advantage and they defined their food classes as per their wish without knowing the consequences. And when they end up in consequences, we all were struggling. So this concept called in a scala as path-dependent types. With this example, we have completed theory. Now let's do some practical. We have started IntelliJ. I've created package called abstraction.type and in that I have created example.sc worksheet. Now let's write the first example. So a trait named abstract type has been defined here. And as we discussed, I have defined the same type T def form which will take parameter as x which is type t and this will write type t again and then i'm defining two variables one is immutable one is mutable okay now let's define some class to use this trait so i'm defining abstract implementation for this type t i'm declaring type t is equal to a string and then i'm keeping this function definition also and then for constant and mute, mutable constant, I'm keeping TOC as the value. Okay, so this is our constructive class, and this is our abstract type trait which we are extending here, so that we will have all this information access. Our class also been defined. So next thing is, you can create this abstract type object, and then you can retrieve some value out. You see, 
we get a QC here. The similar fashion, we can call function also. Here, I'll give QC and see talk talk. Now, the next example we have seen is about defining under trait. So, I'm defining trait, any trait name, and then I'm keeping numerator and denominator, which is int type. Okay. So, now we will check can we create an instance out of this trait? Now, I'll run. And you see, we have created instance out of this any trait. And this is the object here. But as per our definition, we cannot create object of trait. So, what is really happening here? When we declare new with that trait name which we have defined earlier, and when we are defining those local variables of trait in our example here, Iskala have created the anonymous class. So, in that anonymous class, these are anonymous class local variables. It has not defined variables of this trait. It has actually created another anonymous class, which is a type of any trait. Okay. So, the same we will see here as well. Now, I will define the same object in a variable and then we will keep a dot numerator. So, if you see here, a is a type of any trait. And numerator we were keeping 10. So, we are getting 10. So, this is the anonymous class, which is a subclass of your trait. And this is the local variable from that anonymous class. After this, we have discussed the pre initializer condition. So, that pre initializer condition we keep for requirement control. And here we are keeping condition as denominator has to be greater than 0. Now, I will run the same logic here. And you see, illegal argument exception requirement field. Because our this anonymous class is a subclass of this trait type. And this trait expects us to meet this condition as pre-initializer. What happening here is, whatever argument we are passing here, that is going as anonymous class constructor parameter. But when we keep this pre-initialization condition, this should execute before constructor call. Let me repeat, whatever condition we are expecting in this require method call, this should fulfill before your constructor call. And how to do that? We will discuss now. So first, we are creating here new object type of any trait. Now this any trait will shift a little bit. So with new, first we need to pass these two variables and then we will keep with any trait. And now this will work. What really happening is, before calling this any trait or anonymous class constructor, we are fulfilling this super trait type pre-initializing condition. So let's run it now. And if you see, compiler is fine. It has created a object, again type of any trait, which is kind of anonymous class. And we can retrieve value out of it as 10. Now what if you want to construct a class with this trait definition by fulfilling this required condition. So for that, we will write our class definition as precondition. Here, I will keep two parameters. A and B type of int and now I'm extending any type of trait as we have defined here with precondition. In order to fulfill this precondition, I will keep braces and in that braces, I'll define this variables here. And then I'm creating this class object as ABC and then I'm keeping two arguments as 2 and 4. And then we will retrieve ABC dot numerator value which should be value of a which is 2 in our case okay so we have got abc object defined as type of precondition and then abc dot numerator value is 2 we have got class is precondition as we have defined after this example we have discussed about path dependent variables so, to understand path dependent variables, I'll define few classes now. So, I'm defining first class as food, then abstract class as humans. 
and this abstract class human is having eat method with one parameter called anything type of food food we have already defined here and then we are defining class chinese class chinese is extending humans and they are also having same method called eat which taking argument as anything type of grass grass we are giving because grass is subtype of food so print helen will get us debug statement as e things anything whatever we will pass here we will run now and you see class chinese need to be abstract why it require us to declare as abstract because we are not getting type of food so that means on fundamentally we cannot assign type of food to any human race so that means we need to define food only okay now i will so class grass and class chinese has been defined so this is right fundamentally and this definition of class right technically also see we we are defining chinese class that's fine we are extending humans that's also fine and we are defining eat method which is as per the abstract class we need to define anyway because this chinese is a constructive class not the abstract and then we are having classes grass which is extending food so we can define food here because in this function it is expecting food only okay so now chinese is a little cunning breed of humans so what they will do if we give them this definition and if they wanted to utilize their eatables classes what they will do is they will create class bet and this bet they will extends with food now and then one chinese called sinping he will be object of chinese human race class now this sinping can call eat method and this eat can allow him to eat bat now you will see so it is eating bat objects reference here and this is chinese type of zinping and class bat they have defined so that means if we do not apply any restrictions from the super definitions at run time people can misutilize it and they can misutilize it to define their own eatables and they can eat it happily and because of their immature decisions whole world can struggle that anyway we have seen these days okay so how to restrict these kind of implementation especially on the usage front so in order to stop that we need to define the type and this type could be safe food for chinese it could be anything sub classes of food type then we need to define in constructive class also the safe food type and here we will not give the relation we will assign safe food type is equal to food now what will happen when this zinping will try to eat the bat let's see let's run it so you see is still he is able to eat the new bat field that means after applying restrictions also on the food and its sub type it is able to eat bat why because bat is again the sub class of food type so that means we need to restrict this safe food criteria also how to restrict that now we will keep it is equal to grass and when you define safe food is equal to grass you need to define here also as grass now this will complain about the abstraction so we will keep it safe food in our super class eat function parameter okay so now our definition will be good and here we will be having anything type of grass okay so now if you see sinping was trying to eat bat found bat but he is not allowed we have restricted him to eat grass so required grass okay this will be little extreme example so let's define leafy vegetables for him leafy vegetables are good for chinese health so we will take it leafy vegetables here and here also we need to explicitly definitive here in case of chinese so we are defining leafy vegetables here and here also so now when the zinping will try to eat leafy vegetables it will have no issues because leafy vegetable is sub class of food and this leafy vegetables we have already defined in safe food so any type of chinese object for their safe food we have defined as leafy veg and in their eat function this leafy veg we have explicitly defined so that means they are allowed to eat leafy veg 
but what if they are still playing a cunning role? They are defining the bat on eatable class and they are trying to eat bat. You see, at runtime they will have beatings. That you are not allowed to eat bat, you are allowed to eat leafy bats only. So with this example, we have completed today's content. I hope you enjoy my video today. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.